I grew up in a place where it was a pretty bad neighborhood. They had gangs and a lot of bad things going on. My mom decided that she didn't want me to go to the school that I was zoned to. So I would have to wake up at about five o'clock, catch the bus, start school. Because he had to actually catch the city bus, I was concerned, concerned that he was being exposed to different things that he probably wouldn't have otherwise. I would have to catch actually three buses. So it took me about an hour and a half to get here. A calculated risk for a then 12-year-old boy. But I think the school was worth it. The school is Harmony Science Academy, three buses and a world away from Brandon Okafor's life in the A-Leaf area of West Houston. You select the different school for a purpose. Everywhere we want to open schools, parents are lining up to come to Harmony. With more than 30,000 students on 48 campuses and growing, Harmony is now the largest charter school in the state of Texas and one of the largest in the nation. A far cry from its humble beginnings in an area of southwest Houston called Meyerland. Just 10 years earlier, Soner Tarim, a Turkish graduate student, arrived in Houston. I came here uh, early 1990s to help my brother, uh, who was a cancer patient at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Before he passed away, he asked me to stay uh, here and you know, continue my uh, you know, uh, higher education program. So basically, I applied to Texas A&M, uh, restart my PhD program. While caring for his brother's family and pursuing his PhD, Tarim discovered two things that would change the course of his life. His passion for teaching math and science and the charter school movement. Joining forces with a group of fellow Turkish graduate students, they leased what had been a Hebrew academy in a Jewish neighborhood. The board members of this uh, Hebrew academy uh, believed in us and uh, you know, let us uh, sign a lease uh, starting August uh, 2000. The irony of Harmony's first campus being in an old Jewish school is not lost on David Bradley. He was among those conducting the interviews when Harmony applied for its charter with the State Board of Education. They got a unanimous recommendation from the committee and from the full board. Bradley has been an ardent supporter of Harmony ever since, sometimes at odds with its critics, including some members of his own political party. There was a lot of fear, and even today, is the uneasiness and the fact that they were Turkish. I've always been known on the board as the, the leader of the religious right faction, and to some of the critics who were also some of my closest political allies. I go, do you think if there was a problem that I wouldn't be the first to point it out? You know, and I don't have a problem. Okay, you got six and six is 12, right? They're knocking the cover off the ball. They are teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic, and they're doing it at a level that is difficult to improve upon. Brandon Okafor can attest to that. The little boy who used to get up at 5 a.m. and catch three city buses to get to school every day is now a hydrogeologist at AECOM, a Fortune 500 global engineering design firm. Coming here put things in a, a bigger perspective. It taught me that I can excel at math, I can excel at science, I can actually read and write and become something that I really didn't even look up to until I came here. Three, two, one, liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery. Just because you can't see what's out there doesn't mean you can't reach beyond your limits. Perhaps no one understands that better than astronaut turned STEM educator, Dr. Bernard Harris. After 19 years as an astronaut, more than 7 million miles in orbit, and being the first African American to walk in space, Harris set his sights on tackling the nation's dismal record on STEM education. The nonprofit Harris Foundation provides interactive STEM programs targeting minority students. 
And Harris applauds Harmony's founders for recognizing and addressing the critical need in this emerging population long before STEM became a buzzword. To focus an educational institution to reach the economically disadvantaged uh, in communities or, or around this city and in other places um, was, was great. I mean, it was uh, um, incredibly uh, uh, foresightful. The future of this world requires that we have knowledgeable people in STEM. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, STEM jobs are growing faster than any other U.S. sector. The numbers tell the story. 8,650,000. That's the estimated size of the STEM workforce by 2018. Available jobs in the field are set to increase 17% by 2024, compared to just 12% growth in non-STEM employment. Even so, interest in STEM fields remains concentrated among white and Asian men, while the emerging workforce is increasingly minority and female, like recent Harmony High School graduate Denise Aguilar. Going to college, uh, graduating, getting into medical school, and then becoming a pathologist. I'm Denise Aguilar. Denise has set a clear path for her future one her parents envisioned before she was born. My parents are from Mexico, and they immigrated to the United States about 20 years ago. My mom did go to college in Mexico, but it, since she came to the United States, her degree doesn't really mean anything. My dad didn't go to high school, though, so. Denise's parents have made a life for their family cleaning houses. Determined that their daughter would have the best life possible, they enrolled Denise in Harmony, where her cousin attended under the watchful eyes of teachers who seemed to go the extra mile, and not just in the classroom. When teachers take the time to go into the person's home or to call and communicate with the parents, it makes a big difference. Home visits are a core component of Harmony's culture. Since 2000, we made thousands of home visits. We used this opportunity to really create a connection between parents and school and teachers. I would describe Harmony as a very student-oriented school. Nicholas Gonzalez is a Harmony teacher with a unique perspective. He graduated from the school in 2010. Everything that I've seen um, as a student, as a teacher, as a student mentor, they start from, from the foundation of uh, making sure that the student gets whatever it is that they need to get out of the program first. My name is Ruben Paul. I'm a third grader. Harmony's groundbreaking Ice Sweep competition and the annual STEM festival are just two examples. Gonzalez participated as a student and now, as a teacher, loves helping his students prepare. Gonzalez is halfway through a four-year commitment to teach at his alma mater as part of the Grow Your Own Teacher program funded by the Harmony Foundation. The Grow Your Own Teacher program is a forgivable loan. The scholarship will pay up to $9,500 every semester, and you'll go and work for Harmony for as many years that it took you to graduate. There's no need for repayment of that loan, and there's no deduction in your paycheck. Gonzalez is among more than 300 alumni now teaching at Harmony since the program began a few years ago. As the Harmony family makes its mark in the halls of academia and beyond, it continues to embrace the mission of charter schools by sharing best practices with others. With YES Prep and KIPP Academies and the Harmonies, um, you see them all working together. And, um, and how do I define success? I mean, they've got the numbers. You look at their graduation rates, you look at their test rates, you look at the acceptance to all the major universities. 98% of Harmony students graduate, and 100% of those graduates are accepted into college, ready to fill the jobs of the future. And the majority of those students represent the country's changing demographics. Currently, uh, more than 50% of our you know, graduates end up in STEM fields. I think that's to me, is, is, is a huge success. Uh, because the national average is about uh, 15, 17 percent. This is not just about, you know, making sure that African Americans and Latinos and Hispanics are educated. 
This is about uh, how do we preserve our livelihood as a nation. Harmony remains committed to doing its part with an ambitious goal for growth. A new campus in Katy, Texas, is part of a bold strategic plan to have 35,000 students on 55 campuses statewide by the year 2020. It is very important that we continue to grow because we get so many thousands of applications every year, more than 30,000 applications. More than 30,000 students who want to follow in the footsteps of Denise. I'm really grateful of everyone that's helped me on my path going to college. And Nicholas. Thanks to that whole Harmony culture, I've become a success story and I'm able to motivate my family members who had fallen from the path to get them back on the right path. And Brandon. They really tried their best to teach us things that other people will probably overlook and not even think about. And that's what makes the school so wonderful. I think that they have broken the mold and they've done it through hard work, dedication, and motivating and empowering teachers. We're going to UT Austin! The end result? Excited, inspired, well-educated students poised and prepared to provide the skilled STEM workforce needed to lead America and the world toward the future.